103.9 FM, WOZO Radio, Knoxville. Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. Hello, and welcome to Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on the WOZO Radio 103.9 LP FM right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Today is Sunday, January 3rd, 2021. I'm Larry Rhodes at Oregon Counter 5, and as usual, we have the Wombat on the phone with us. Hello, Wombat. Should all acquaintance be forgot? Does that mean you're trying to forget people? Like, I know. It one sounds like. One it does. All your acquaintances. Seems like a weird thing. Like, why would you want to do that? to start the year off. Anyway, yeah. there you go. Our guests today are Doubtfire, Boudreaux, uh, Dread Pirate Higgs, George. Um, did I leave anybody out? Oh, I think I got everybody. Scott. Nice. Um, Digital Free Thought Radio Hour is a talk radio show about atheism, free thought, rational thought, humanism, and the sciences. And conversely, we also talk about religion, religious faith, gods, holy books, and superstition. If you get the feeling that you're the only non-believer in Knoxville, well, you're just not. There are several atheists and free-thinking groups here in Knoxville with uh, we'll be telling you how you can connect with them right after the mid-show breaks. Also, did you know that there's a streaming atheist call-in video show broadcasting here in Knoxville and has been for over 10 years? Correct. Did you know that one, Pat? So, start of the new year, I picked up uh, all the old episodes of the show, and I can be honest with you, uh, a lot of people give it a hard time, but I think it comes out pretty good. Yeah, it was mm-hmm. weird yeah. when Wonder Woman came out with her like gold what? armor, but HBO Max made a good call in just releasing it. No, no, it's Keep a fun looking. watch. Keep watching no. it. You're going to be good. It's a fun ride. Yeah. It's for it, free. It Enjoy good, it. But it's, it's good. It's not Wonder Woman. But anyway, we'll tell you more about how the details about how you can listen to it and watch it, interact with it, actually, after the mid-show break. Nice. If you'd like to interact with us during the show, go to Facebook and search for our Digital Free Thought Radio Hour page, and then you can use the messaging function to send us questions or comments. Well, Matt, what do you have for us today? Hey, today we're going to be talking about New Year's resolutions, or really how we're going to improve ourselves in 2021. But before we get into it, I want to throw it up to our own Dread Pirate Hicks with our weekly invocation. And thank you for the first invocation of the year. (laughs) Quab be my captain, I shall not want. He maketh me to float in salt water. He steereth me through glassy seas. He filleth my bowl. He steereth me through the straits of noodliness for goodness sake. I, though I sail through the heaving of tempestuous waters, I will fear not sinking. Forever? Forever and ever. <laughs> Robin! Robin! <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so uh, what we were going to be talking about was, hey, what plans that we have on improving ourselves for uh, the new year. But it's been a week since I've seen you guys. We actually had a terrorist attack in Nashville. Uh, yeah. A trucker exploded. Uh, I don't, I, thankfully, not many people were killed. I don't think, I'm not sure if anyone were, but uh, it was just some severe injuries. Um, but the power got knocked out at a uh, 5G tower or something like that. So all cellular, all Wi-Fi, if you had AT&T, was out for for me while on Christmas break. And let me tell you something. You realize how few (laughs) activities you can actually do in your home when there's no internet (laughs) or cable. It's like, I guess I could read a book. No, that's right. I have a Kindle, and that's connected to the Wi-Fi, so I don't have access Mm -hmm. to my books. I guess I'll play some video games. No, they they have DRM. I'm locked out of them. I can't watch Mm -hmm. TV. No. It's like, okay, so all these boxes that glow do nothing. <laughs> I guess I'll go outside and throw a ball. That's the only thing I can do. But uh, that was my, that was the first start of my holiday. I would like to go around and see how everyone else is, was enjoying their holidays too. We'll start with uh, Larry. How you been Larry? It's been, well, a- you did have a lot of instruments around the house. You could play them. Of course. I sure did. I sure did. Yeah. You know, you're right. I did have a lot of fun with uh, yeah. making some music. Yeah. In fact, yeah. yeah. Uh, our internet was fine. So uh, we played games and, uh, just watch TV and did whatever we wanted to do. Uh, I do have a guitar over here, um, but I didn't pick it up. I, I rarely do anymore. Mm-hmm. It's an acoustic guitar, and it doesn't take me long for my fingers to get sore. Five minutes. Uh, it. Yeah. But I, yeah. I need to work on that. But other than that, yeah. it was all good. Good, good. Good holidays. Did you get anything good mm-hmm. that you wanted? Nice. Yep. Isn't it great <laughs> when you can just buy your own gifts? Isn't that like the best thing ever? Oh, yeah, for sure. 
Udro, we'll throw it up to you. How was your holiday? It was nice. I made a huge list of things I wanted to get done, and I got two of them done. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Daddy Check off two. Yeah. <laughs> so the Playing best thing much. about that. What's that? Morning. I was saying like the best thing about a list like that is at the bottom you should just put have a chill time, dude. And that way yeah. you always get three things off the list no matter what. That's right. Play video games crossed off. Yeah. Yeah. If I ever make yeah. a list like that, my first one would just be make a list. Number one. And then number 10 <laughs> is have a chill time, dude. And I knock off right. the first one and then. And then go to the last one. <laughs> <laughs> What else did you do? What else did you do? How was your family? Uh, family's good. Uh, did a lot of gaming um, uh, on the Xbox, <laughs> nice. and that uh, was fun. Um, but yeah, it didn't didn't get to share share it with the uh, family. We did a Zoom Christmas. Okay. We didn't get to see anyone in person, which you know, trying to trying to stay safe. So, right. But uh, yeah, it's more of a mellow time. But um, yeah. I am looking forward to like the idea of like. The anticipation, the double anticipation of finally getting to see your family and friends again. Mm -hmm. I'm really looking forward to that. So it's like I'm just carrying it forward. It's not like it's over. It's just yeah. one of those things I'm looking more excited for. Scott, doubt, fire, dub, shine, in the house. He's got the little shadow going on. I love it. What's going on? How was your holiday? Man, it was really relaxing. Just chilling out with the family and, you know, just taking it easy and, um, just doing stuff around the house, keeping busy, staying out of public. You know, this is one of those times when you want to be part of the solution rather than the problem. So you don't want to be right. out and about and trying to make a big deal about things as you usually would. Um, so in this case, I just took it, took the opportunity to chill, you know, and just mm. have a different kind of holiday, you know, yeah. and it was nice. I agree. Exchange. And Things change. You got to change with it. Absolutely. That's true. And it's going to be a theme of today's show too. I have been running nonstop since January because we've been making, you know, filtration media for everybody. And so like, this is last two weeks for the first time I had extended time off. And there was a period where I didn't know what to do with myself, but then I realized this is nice. Just waking up and being like, I don't have anything on my list today. I don't need to call anybody. Don't need to check my emails. Let's just do what I need to get done to, to stay calm. And it has been really good on my health. Dread Pirate Higgs, he's got the hat. Does it glow in the dark, though? That's the question. That's the real question. Oh, wait. Mm -hmm. Does it light up? That's the real question. Will it light up on time and on cue? Here's the moment of truth. Podcast mm -hmm. listeners are going like, what's going on? He's he's frantically fumbling through his hair to see if you can make that hat light up. And it's only going to take, it won't take up too much more airtime. There we go. Oh. So worth it. Yeah. So worth it. <laughs> <laughs> with highlights. Yeah. Things Tell are going good up here. Nice. How, yeah. good. how are you doing? You're looking forward to a new class session pretty soon? Or are you getting ready? That's coming up on the 28th. Um, yeah, unfortunately, well, I don't know. Well, I guess we'll see what the, uh, what the uh, uptake is. But they, they put it in uh, uh, leisure and recreation. Um, I don't know. I, I thought it might have been a better under a, a different uh, sort of like, you know, business leadership or, you know, something, right? But um, we'll, we'll see something. how it we'll see how it goes. I uh, I asked them. I did ask them to consider changing it, putting it into something, you know, people will tend to look at more, uh, just to get it out there. But uh, we'll, we'll see how it goes. Okay. Yeah. 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 And I think, of course, uh, I, I've got the court case also coming up in the first week of February. So uh, that's to, uh, you know, have it out with the Human Rights Tribunal for discrimination and not wanting to take on my case. So, right. You mind giving a would brief you, overview would you, of what uh, that... t Tell us a little bit about that case for a moment. Yeah. You got time? Yeah, go for it. Go All for right. It. So, uh, so I filed a, a, a complaint with the Human Rights Tribunal against um, our provincial uh, motor vehicle insurer, ICBC, Insurance Corporation, British Columbia, because they wouldn't allow me to wear my tricorn, my religious headgear, in my driver's license photograph. Um, of course, uh, I've, I've got my federal firearms acquisition license uh, where they allowed me to wear it uh, after I you know, argued that it was my religious headgear. And that was not an issue, but ICBC has been put on a big fuss 
So when I filed the complaint against uh, the Human Rights Tribunal, they refused to even listen to it. They said, well, mm -hmm. you're a Pastafarian, you mock other religions, you wear Colin on your head, so go away. Uh, and I well, said, the well, point. you're the human rights tri you're the human rights tribunal, and these are my human rights. And under the, uh, under the Charter of uh, Rights and Freedoms in Canada, um, that's your job to defend that, regardless of whether you like what I have to say or not. So um, I am now taking, like I said, I'm taking them to the Supreme Court here in Canada in the first week of February uh, to have the case heard before uh, yeah. before a, a, a master. Right. One of the things that you might want to keep in mind is that it's not the government's position to decide which religion is valid and which religion is not. Absolutely. And that that's that would be the thing that would take you through. Yeah, I, uh, I've got uh, I've got a milk stool um, argument for for this whole thing. So um, I got three very strong legs uh, upon which to stand this, uh, and the least of which is if I had gone into ICBC wearing a turban that uh, a friend of mine who's a Sikh had, uh, you know, properly attired me with, what would they say? Would they take pause to say, you're not a Sikh? You know, w would they question that? And, and then how would they test my veracity? Um, it seems to me that, you know, it's really, uh, it is a almost a, 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 an implicit uh, discrimination where it can be assumed that if you're brown um, and you're wearing a turban, sure, we'll take your photo with your turban on. But man, if you're a white guy, uh, that would be a whole different story, I believe. So yep. I think that's uh, one of the one of this one of the legs that uh, this thing stands on. So nice. Mm. At least from here, you you can pass as a Sikh. I got too many friends from Pakistan. Mm -hmm. They'll be like, no, 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 no. It doesn't count here. It doesn't count here. <laughs> George, I would like to catch up on you. How you been over the last couple of weeks? And well, I've been holiday? great. I, I've been really good. Um, but the one thing, I have ADD, and um, one of the things uh, that I have trouble with is staying focused when trying to do arithmetic. Okay. So it's show and tell time. This is a genuine Chinese calculator Man. made by a Chinese company called Osalo. Oh, and it looks like Casio. It, well, it may. Uh, this is a very nice calculator. Yes. Well built. Now I think we're we're coming on to a new generation of Chinese brand name products that are actually quite good. Oh yeah, definitely. And, this this calculator is almost unique um, because it's a replay calculator so that when my mind wanders while I'm entering numbers, this machine will remember the sequence and I can play back the sequence and correct my errors. So uh, it's not the only one of its type. And it's Did so you get that for Christmas or, or yeah. Hanukkah? Oh, ah, okay, nice. Well, yeah, I I'll just yourself. Fun. Sure. And, and it, it is so... Uh, um, humanely conceived that nice. for a backup battery it has a double a a triple a cell instead nice. of some obscure um you know uh, cell button battery, battery that's soldered into it yeah, yeah 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 this is this is a considerate product I, i'm very pleased with this thing not bad so i can tell you if yeah. we're going to be talking about the best things we got maybe we can do a quick round table on this one too <laughs> okay best things we got on christmas uh, or at least for holidays, gifts to ourselves. Hopefully, none of one in my family will watch this because they'll immediately start picking up the phone like Tyrone. The <laughs> 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 drama. I don't need any extra phone calls, but I did get myself a massage chair, and I think that's like the coolest thing I've ever gotten. I have this little wow. nook where I used to record um, SE videos in my living room, and it was this big open area that's just like walk-in. It had like the lights and all this stuff on. But I found out that it's a lot easier to just record videos in my office in this room. And so I had this big abandoned area in my living room that I just didn't do anything with. And I'm like, maybe I should turn this into like, I don't know, like a reading nook or like a library, something like that. And I'm like, what if I turn it into like a meditation center? Like had like a weird little meditation ball. And I'm like, I don't wanna, I don't wanna have to like work. <laughs> I just wanna 
place where I can zonk out. What's the best thing I can get to zonk out? I'm like, massage chair. So I got one on Amazon and it was the craziest thing they shipped over to my house ever. Got it through my door. I didn't measure the dimensions of my door to begin with. I highly recommend you do that. But when I did get it and I put it in, I got in and I'm like, this is the best thing ever. It's the best thing ever. And the convenience of getting massages like as many times as you want throughout the day, middle of the night, no problems, no COVID worries. It's just the best thing ever. And I think that's the, that's my MVP for at least this year. <laughs> Things I spent my money on. Boudreaux, I'm going to throw that at you. Did you have something that you were happy that you got physical, physical, worldly good? What do you got? Don't yeah, give me family. Uh, uh <laughs> right. um, yeah, mine's not as uh, elaborate as, as yours, uh, but my, my wife did get me a, a Yeti uh, tumbler, like a, like a little, uh, you know, not quite for coffee, but like a shorter one for, um, you know, I'm a, I'm a Diet Coke drinker, so I, nice. you know, uh, I fill it up with ice, you know, in the afternoon and it lasts, you know, well into the evening. It's pretty nice. So very, that's very kinda, cool. That's kind of cool. And he's a man of his drinks too. You're like sitting right in front of your bar, aren't you? You're like you, you, I am, you take yeah. a considerable, you take considerate care of the liquids you put into your body. <laughs> I, I do. I, I like, I like some of these brown liquids, you know, here yeah. and there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. Uh, Doubt fire. You mind telling me like, what's something that if you did get a worldly good or a worldly possession that you enjoyed a lot, a gift that you're like, Hey, for me or from someone from me for me, I enjoy this. What was it? What's something that oh, you were like? And, you know, it's going to be some hardware, some nice, uh, some musical equipment, man. Some uh, okay, some, uh, really good um, sound stations or keyboards or drum programming machines. I'm trying to get some hardware equipment built back up. So that's like one of my goals, and I've started doing that this holiday. So I got a few pieces. So I'm just kind of building my little army over here. Nice. And getting ready to do some damage. <laughs> Make sure you don't run out of XLR cables. That's always the worst thing. Oh yeah. Like, I got this new. I got this new thing and nothing to connect it to. What? Exactly. Mail to mail. Who what? makes mail to mail? What's, I, it doesn't make sense. <laughs> hey, cables, okay. the cables. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> uh, Larry, I'll throw it out at you. Is there anything that you had gotten that you're happy? Yeah, I got best several things uh, that I really enjoyed. Um, <laughs> Sheila gave me a new set of speakers. I bought mine. I mean, it broke mine. Oh, well, those are fancy. Are, they're lighted. Yeah. And uh, I'm enjoying those. She got me a pair of uh, pajamas. I've never had pajamas before, <laughs> but uh, it's been so cold lately that uh, they're really comfortable. I enjoy So you them. can't have that conversation without telling me what's on the pajamas. What's the pattern on the pajamas? Oh, it's just plain. Plain uh, red. Sheila, like what are you doing? Burgundy. You could have make them wear anything. <laughs> but I did get myself a, an SDR, which is a software-defined radio. Uh, I'm a ham radio guy. And you hook it up to your computer and it lets you monitor the different frequencies and stuff. But it came okay. and it never worked. So oh, that was man. disappointing. It it was broken from receipt. So I had to order another one. But uh, uh, it was, it's all good. Very good. So as a, just for everyone to know, there's a, there's a really strong ham radio community in Knoxville and like mm -hmm. there's meetings for radios and there's constantly people chattering back and forth on, on that station. So like, yes. if you are into ham radios, Knoxville is the place to be. If you're in right. Tennessee, it's, it's like, one of the, the group places. is called rack R A C K. Yeah. They're radio a rack. amateur community of Knoxville. <laughs> <laughs> and what is this Every device you're talking about, Larry? Oh, it's a software defined radio. It's a, it looks like a thumb drive. Nice. You plug it into a USB port and hook an antenna up to it, and it, it receives on all the bands that the antenna will support. Very cool. Ah. You can't transmit with it, but it, it's pretty cool just to sit at your desk and monitor the bands. How, how much does it cost? Well, that one will cost about $35. <laughs> oh, wow. Hey, that's not bad. That's not bad. So that, not replaces, not bad my, that replaces my whole my whole old Holy Crafters radio. Except it doesn't transmit. I, you know. Yeah. Well, neither did my Holy Crafters. Yeah. Did yeah. you know that there are places online that you can just go using your browser that will hook you up directly to uh, receivers all over the world and you can monitor, monitor them, the ham frequencies just with your browser? No, I didn't. There is, yep. there's no. also, this is random information, but there's mm -hmm. also a website you can go to that you'll call that will call somebody who will call whoever you're calling, who want to call, 
who will speak for you for whatever you type in because you're calling them as a deaf person and they will just call whoever you need to talk to yeah. as a speaking person who's reading whatever yeah. text you write again. And it's yeah. a real and person. I'd like, to, I'd like to make a, Wait, a statement for all the younger youngsters out there sure. uh, who have their phone say, I have a phone, what do I need a ham radio for? Mm. Well, if the if the grid ever went down, like in Nashville, the grid went down. Exactly. Uh, all you need is a car battery, yep. and then you can you can transmit literally around the world uh, right. with the right equipment, with ham radio equipment, with and a car battery. That's so important because when the cellular and Wi-Fi were both out, I had no way of checking the news. I had no way of mm -hmm. calling family members. I didn't know what was available, what wasn't. If there was like a, a state of emergency, should I stay indoors or should I just wait? Because this is a 15-minute yeah. problem. And if the, grid, if the grid did go down, Tennessee yeah. and most states have a ham radio a network uh, <clears throat> that, that will go into action and Absolutely. be able to transmit messages. We have one here in Grand Forks, in fact. Mm. Ooh, nice. Speaking of forks, what else did you got that you were really happy about? <laughs> um, I got. Oh, look at that. Okay. So you might want to explain what the listeners are watching right now. Okay. That's uh, my new Corsair uh, keyboard and uh, multifunction gaming um, mouse. It's a very, very fancy keyboard and mouse. It glows yeah. in the dark with so many colors. It's great. Have distraction. that same keyboard. I love it. <laughs> it's clicky. It's clicky, it's right? Clicky. Oh, okay. All right. Mm. Oh, hey, look. Uh, Larry's also holding up his glow in the dark, uh, multi color ah. strobing uh, uh, mouse. Oh, which one's that? Is that an Ega? It's G, uh, G Force. Oh, G Force. Yeah, and I have a, a G Force keyboard as well. I don't know if you can see it or not, but oh yeah, wow! Look at, look at all you nerds! Look at all you nerds! <laughs> now I know what not to get because it's not cool anymore. <laughs> <laughs> uh, sorry, that's a bad I beg I your pardon. Sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm working on that. Speaking of things I'm working on, I want to talk about today about the nature of in self improvement for at least for 2021. And I said to myself at the beginning of 2021. <laughs> Even if things don't change socially, politically, climate wise, all that stuff, I can change. And I think there's power in that and visualizing myself as a better person growing through time. And it does draw from my um, secular worldview because I don't surprise guys. I'm an atheist. I don't believe that there's a God controlling everything. I don't think there's greater purpose to the universe, but I do believe that there is a purpose that we can give ourselves. And I find that to be so much more worthwhile when I can give meaning to my own life. And when I look at the, when I look at every animal on earth, every single organism is trying to do its, uh, uh, its best to do something a little bit different next generation, or a little bit better or next season, get kids that look a little bit more stronger or a little bit more brown to live in this brown right. area. Uh, <laughs> and it's just a trial and error. Everything's just trying to do its best to not stay stationary and find some way to improve, improve their chances, have a better quality of life. And I'm like, I'm inspired by this. What can I do for 2021 to make myself a better person? And I think what we can do when we come back from that half of this uh, show is just do a round table discussion on things that we're planning on doing to improve ourselves for this year. Cause I think if there's ever a time to learn from <laughs> a year, it was 2020, but that's behind us now. We're here now and we're gonna figure out what we're planning on doing uh, to, to get better. We're at the bottom of the half hour, Larry, why, or top, yeah, bottom of the half hour, Larry, why don't you take us out? We'll come right back. Okay, uh, this has been the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour first half. Uh, we're on WOZO Radio 103.9 LP FM right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. And we'll be right back after this short break. i 
3.9 FM, WOZO Radio, Knoxville. Hello, and welcome back to the second half of the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio, 103.9 LPFM here in Knoxville, Tennessee. I'm Dr. Five. Today is Sunday, December, I'm sorry, January 3rd, 2021. Yes. And uh, let's talk about the atheist free thought groups that you can join right here in Knoxville. First, there's the Atheist Society of Knoxville, or ASK. Uh, founded in 2002, we're in our 18th year. ASK has over 1,000 members now, and we have a weekly Zoom meeting during COVID. Uh, you can find us online on Facebook or at uh, knoxvilleatheist.org, or you can go to Meetup or Google and search for Knoxville Atheist. It's just that simple. By the way, if you don't live in Knoxville, you can still go to Meetup and search for an atheist group in your town. Don't find one? Start, Start one. one. Start one. That's right. Another large free-thinking group here in Knoxville, the Rationalists of East Tennessee, R-E-T. They are also on Facebook. Or you can go to rationalist.org and click on upcoming events to find out what they're up to. Earlier in the show, we said we'd talk about the Knoxville Atheist TV or slash video show. Well, it's called... Well, it used to be called Free Thought Forum Knoxville, and there are a lot of videos on YouTube under that name, Free Thought Forum Knoxville. But it has morphed to a YouTube streaming service or channel, and you can find their new ones under Free Thought Freethinkers United Coalition of Knoxville. Uh, you can find all kinds of archives under uh, Free Thought. Just go looking for it. Also, if you're interested in getting involved in the TV or the radio show, just come to an ASK meeting, uh, ASK Facebook page, RET Facebook page, and talk to us about it. Uh, you can be our next co-host or guest. With us today on the show are Wombat, Dread Pirate Higgs, George, Doubtfire, and Boudreaux. Welcome all. Um, where do you want to pick up, Wombat? So I wanted to talk about my two favorite ingredients, which are, of course, salt and pepper. If you guys aren't familiar with it, let me uh, let me throw some bars at you. It, uh, okay. it, you add them to a little dish, you, you put them into your air fryer, and you pop it out, and you get something delicious. So good! What a fan! What a fan! What a fan! What a mighty good fan! What a mighty good, good, good fan! <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. So we're gonna go over comments from fans of the show, uh, and also our Reddit page. Uh, directly from our Reddit show, we have Dadas. I'm sorry. Directly from our YouTube channel, we have Dadas Trading Room. We want to wish us all a merry and happy and safe holidays, or whatever you consider to be your holidays, or not. <laughs> Isn't that like the classic way how an atheist would be like, "Hey, happy holidays," or "Not your holidays," or whatever you consider to be your whatever holidays. you celebrate. Yep. It's not a big deal either way. Mm -hmm. uh, we did get a question from Scott 
uh, uh, posted to our, our Reddit on r slash street epistemology. He wanted to know, has anyone here successfully helped uh, a COVID denier or any other type of conspiracy theorist or nationalist with SE or through conversation? And what are your tips for doing that? Dred, I know that's a big question, but I want to throw it out at you since you also have done SE. Uh, have you? Well, I, I was SE typing. I was typing when you asked the question, so I didn't actually sure. catch it. So Here it um, I'll wait for someone else to speak and then come back to me. Nope, you are not getting off the hot seat Ooh. that easy. So, <laughs> Dred, there's the question for you again. Okay. Have you ever right. have you ever used conversation to help a COVID denier or someone who's a conspiracy theorist get over their dogma or? Uh, short sightedness. Well, well, I've certainly had uh, discussions um, about vaccinations. Mm, so, okay. uh, in a roundabout way, um, I've, I've, I've uh, you know, uh, approached the topic. Um, and I've certainly had some people sort of test my waters, as it were, by asking me almost directly, um, do you think this COVID thing is real? Mm. Um, and so I always come back with, uh, you know, a, a science-based answer and, um, uh, you, know, you know, a caution for, for anyone um, asking that question to evaluate best on the best, uh, on the best evidence available. So, yes. Nice, nice, nice. Boudreaux, I'll throw it out at you since you've had some experience with this. Yeah, yeah. I guess not strictly SE, but maybe, uh, maybe partially kind of subliminally SE because okay. of all the great stuff you guys do. But uh, I, on two separate occasions, I've had, uh, at least recently, people ask me, you know, about vaccines. W in one context, it was vaccines, like a flu vaccine. Like, yeah, you know, you really, do you do this to your for kids? Uh, it was another parent asking if he should give his kids flu vaccines. And on another occasion, it was it was a lady ask, or f afraid of getting the COVID vaccine saying, oh, I'm going to wait until a lot more people get it and safe. And, and in both occasions, I had a very, very simple response that made them both think, I think, you know, at least they, they reacted like that they clicked. Good. And, I, and I was like, so yeah, the, this vaccine, I'm not really sure. You know, should I give this vaccine to my kids? And I'm like, don't ask me, ask, ask your pediatrician. What would they say? Go with that. Go with that advice, you know. And then the other the other person asked me. He's like, "Yeah, uh, uh, the 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 son of this guy who I clean his house said that the vaccine is probably going to give you Bell's palsy." So I'm a little afraid. I was like, "Again, don't don't talk to the son of the guy that you clean his house. Talk to your doctor." Oh, my doctor says I should get it. And I was like, yeah. "Well, what do you what do you think? What do you think you should go with?" So and I don't know if it changed of their minds, but. It, it made them think. Very good. And now, I like that. And now Chad's calling me. Hey, Chad, get on the line. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. Uh, Larry, I'll throw this out at you. Ask an atheist table if you were to meet a COVID denier. Like, how would you approach that? Oh, you know me. I, I'm not so much into SE, although I should be. It's a very uh, valid use of uh, argumentation. Um, but I just, I just generally go at it and say, you know, I, I've known people who had it. I've known people whose friends have had it. Uh, I know that it exists. I know that for the results that we could get from practicing safe measures, uh, it's it's very worth doing, even if you think that it may be a hoax. I mean, there's a chance it may be a hoax, maybe a chance that there isn't, but it, the, it wear a mask. I mean, that's all that it takes for a while. You know, wear a mask for a while when you're in public and it will help out. And if that's all you're out, and it's not like costing you money, costing you uh, friends, just wear a mask and, and give the benefit of the doubt to the people who might die from it. Right. So I had I had a pretty similar outlook at the start of this, too. I was saying, like, uh, we're still a lot of data that we're gathering to determine how severe this thing is. But regardless of how obscure or scary or like just nebulous things are at the moment, let's take the precautions because it's just like wearing a seatbelt. You know, like you don't know if you're going to get in a car accident today, but you're going to pull your seatbelt anyway, right? Take the precautions in the event that something happens. Does it really take right. that much time out of your day mm -hmm. to wash your hands maybe a second or a third time? <clears throat> Does it take that much time to cover up your, <laughs> your face? And when you're in a public environment, think about the people who could get sick who aren't you. Uh, These are the things point, that we should be thinking. <clears throat> one other point was, since this has happened and I've been wearing a mask and washing my hands all the time, 
Yeah. I haven't got a cold. I haven't Isn't got a great... flu. Yeah, you know, same here. Been, I, I've been a year now without a cold or a flu. Yeah, so, I mean, nuts. that right there is benefit enough to, to warrant wearing a mask. Yeah, absolutely. It's been it's amazing how healthy you are when you actually start taking care of yourself in terms yeah. of like, you know, a public hygiene. Right. But I think now we know, obviously, from the data that we have, that America is doing a terrible job worldwide with regard to having right. the COVID right. the worst. compared to anything else. And not yeah. America as in Canada. I'm not even throwing Dread Pirates country yeah. in it. It's just... Just no, USA. USA. It's just, <laughs> and just it's very Tennessee good. And just Knoxville. We're yeah, the worst. And, and, cro <laughs> and cross cross one state border, cross like one highway, and it's just uh, a horror show of people yeah. who are like, hey, I don't need to wear no mask. I wear my mask like this. America is the best. Freedom. Country. My president That's doesn't right. like this. Freedom. <laughs> and I'm like, we have such a terrible administration that has not been supporting. Right. Did not get any kind of message across. Send so many cross signal messages mm -hmm. saying inject bleach in yourself. Oh, it's so bad, so bad. So yeah, hopefully we'll terrible. have a better time now. But it's it's only two weeks to go, isn't it? Less well, I was well, until the, the message changed, the twentieth, sure. seventeen days, yeah. forty one hours, or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> There's a countdown. Is there a, count, okay. is there a countdown board somewhere? Oh, absolutely. Oh gosh, absolutely. you know there oh, is. Yeah. Oh man, I How have it on New apps. York, right in Times Square. There. Oh, I would love it. I would love it. <laughs> anyway, though, uh, uh, Scott Williamson, we're going to throw the question out to you. Uh, how would you deal with a COVID denier? Uh, is there a conversational set of questions that you would use? It doesn't have to be SE, but what would you ask? Yeah, um, it's funny because I've, I've had this conversation, especially where I work, because like I told you, I worked in a hospital, St. Joseph Hospital, all for 2020, and I'm going to start working at Sacred Heart. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, the, 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 it's really weird because we work in a hospital, we work in COVID units, we see people, um, you know, going to the hospital, we see the influx of patients. But, you know, really weird thing about IP, IT people I've come to realize is they have a lot of conspiracy theory IT people. I've never seen a group of people. Oh, they're that, the most uh, conspiracy theory people out there. Exactly. IT guys, they, they're they the really most. are. They Why love the dots, man. They, oh, yeah. They love they it. They're, they, nothing but, they're nothing but on those channels all day long, dude. And they know how to get long, access to all the channels and just getting bits and data. And they're like, I yep. I know what's going on. Oh, and they love to feel smart and superior. Oh, and, yes, they oh, do. Yeah. Oh, I was yeah, in they're... IT for a while, so I know I'm not. I'm not oh, okay. you. No, I was okay. IT two years. I was IT all my undergraduate, my uh, my undergraduate. I did that as my part time job. I was IT. Oh, OK. Yeah. OK. So I know. Yeah. So, yeah. So they, they came at me, of course, you know, and they actually talk to me as if I'm assuming I'm agreeing with them, you know, like, mm -hmm. you know, this hoax thing is really crazy and it, you know, it's like, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, just say, look, man, um, I appeal to science myself, the consensus of science and this is the deal. And we're really one of the, and I said, you know, and one of the arguments that I would put forth is that, you know, you always go to a second and third opinion, if mm. something's wrong with you. Mm. So, right. And they're like, yeah, so great. So you go to professionals in a given field to get second advice, whether it be to fix your car or, um, you know, whether you've got some kind of sickness or whatever, you go to a doctor. So you appeal to the professionals yourself, but for some reason in this area right here, you don't want to appeal to the professionals. Mm. Um, I do. I want to be consistent with that. So that kind of makes them think, um, but one of the weird thing was the, uh, one of the guys, we had a religious discussion one time at break and he was, you know, coming forth with that, um, uh, you know, uh, you know, what, I can't even think of the name of it, but it's an argument that, you know, why, why, you know, believe in God, because why risk it? You're going to go to hell. Pascal's wager. Ah, Pascal's Pascal's wager. wager. There you go. There you go. Yeah. And I simply used the same tactic on him about COVID. Like, well, if COVID isn't real, then you've got nothing to lose. Anyways, either way, if you if you wear the mask, if you social distance, you're not losing anything. But if you uh, take the precautions just in case it may be real, you're protected. So either way, you're going to come out ahead on that, right? Right. And so Absolutely. that's your logic for everything else. So why not apply it consistently? Right. And that seemed to make <laughs> sense to them. I also like the idea of having standards of information to inform your actions. Cause there was the idea of like, Hey man, just get a sock, wrap it around your face. You'll be, that's a covering. You'll be good. But like for guys who are in filtration, like we know, like 
efficiency in very thin fabrics is you might as well not be wearing anything at all. So like, what's the best kind of fabric you can wear? What's the best kind of materials that are good for this? This N95 mask that you're wearing for four hours isn't rated for that long to be worn. Those are worn for doctors in this clinical sterile environment and thrown away as a biohazard because they, they just get gunked up. They aren't meant to be walking through the aisles of Walmart. So like, what can we make? to make someone be safe for an extended period of time in a pedestrian environment. Like we were asking some hard questions that made us really uncomfortable because we're like, but I like this mask or like, this is much more breathable or like, what are you saying? Everyone's unsafe. It's like, yes. <laughs> what kind of standards can we do to improve the basic <laughs> lifetime? And we've been giving that information out as part of our company. And so like, if you go to a, I went to Marco's pizza, mm -hmm. uh, they, it's a pizza company in, in Tennessee. I'm sure they're all over the place too, but they have a box that they've, cashier which is a bunch of face masks you're free to take as many as you want and walk out the filtration efficiency in just those handout masks are insanely better than they were like a couple of uh, years ago or uh, beginning of last two years ago and i think it's just from the fact that everyone's working hard to improve ppe in general and i just think that's an amazing thing george mm. i want to throw it out at you one more time uh What's something that you would say to a client or a COVID or denier? A huh. denier? Yeah. yeah. Well, it's been on my mind. I have been extremely unsuccessful with any kind of logic talking about anything here, you know, halfway between Knoxville and Chattanooga. Hmm. So there's something either wrong with me or wrong with the other people. And I haven't figured out which. Um, a neighbor of mine had uh, stents put in his arteries a couple of years ago. So I have an imaginary conversation with him in which I say, when you needed stents put into your arteries, did you go to your car mechanic to have them done? Mm, did you go right. to your minister to have him put the stents in your arteries? Sure. Um, Somehow, I don't think this would get across to him. Um, so I've been listening in particular to what Scott and uh, Larry have just said, because um, I, I like what you said. You see, the reason I'm saying this is because I have been around medical professionals recently who have been deniers. Mm, yep. Okay. Uh, I was in the hospital last Tuesday. And I spotted four people on staff, actually five people on staff, including one doctor who was not wearing a mask. Uh. And uh, my own doctor, um, I'm firing my doctor. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I mean, Understand. it's come down. It, it has just yeah. come down to yeah. that. Yeah. yeah go I, for I it. Can't I can't. I just am I, so... Um, I'm finding myself so emotionally opposed to the man that I can't stand being in his presence. Sure. And um, I've gotten myself another doctor. I think, I'm, yeah. I mean, I'm going to see him uh, in a couple of weeks, and I'm really excited. I'm looking forward to that. This is the only doctor here who's not a Republican. You know what? I'm going to tell you something. That sounds like yeah. a good way for you to improve your 2021. I think you yeah, just sorry. gave me a good way to get it. Well, we're going to get to that topic soon, right? We're going to get to it now because we only got eight <laughs> minutes left. <laughs> okay. Let me tell you my plan then. I'm going yeah, to give me it. Give me it. I'm going to jump to this topic. Um, the most important thing in my life right now is to know myself, nice. is to get to know what my own automatic behavior is and to be able to deal with that. And uh, to me, this is profound because I, I believe we are all really walking automatons, uh, victims of our own early programming and programming we picked up during life. And so at this late age, um, that's my goal. Nice. Very cool. Uh, Boudreaux, what's your plan for self-improvement in 2021? So we don't really call it a New Year's resolution, but... Um, yeah, I think that's you know, played out, but sure. Yeah, uh, it's unfortunate, though. So it doesn't matter what I pick because I always give it up for Lent anyway. So <laughs> it's... <laughs> Sorry. Um, Catholic joke. Uh, I, mine's pretty pretty typical, maybe boring, but I, I, we're going to try to do it a fun way. Um, I want to lose a little LBs uh, nice. this year, and, and a fun way to do it, I found, is this thing called an eight-week challenge. It's like a sheet you print out. And every week you, you, you score points for doing healthy habits, drinking water, fruits and vegetables, exercise. And um, 
You do it as a group and you email the group each week. It's a perfect Ooh. COVID uh, social wow. distance thing. So, wow. hey, if anyone wants info on it or wants to jump on, uh, I'll send you the link and you can you can join us. But it's 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 been successful in the past for me, so I'm going to do it. Boudreaux, I'll throw out another tip for you because it seems like it'd be right up your alley. Uh, if you got a VR headset, you'd be able to, I mean, dance play laser tag there's yeah. there's so many free games there's a game called rec room which is literally just volleyball ping pong basketball whatever you want and you're playing with real people who also have headsets oh. on and they're just oh. yeah i mean i'm quarantining too i'm quarantining too and i right. think the last thing i did was a game of paintball with just a bunch of you know adults kids everywhere all mm. socially distanced from we're miles away from each other but where i'm in my room like hiding behind like you know a stack of like barrels shooting some kid who's like who's hitting me i'm like yeah take that, take that. and i'm working up a sweat in the same time too it's it, and you have the perfect environment for it uh moving on that fire plan for self-improvement the reason why i don't like new year's resolution is it seems like it's tied to just the new year i want something that you're going to do extended like what's your continued step forward as a progression of a human being what's your yeah plan so that, that I was about to say that, that um, years uh, trying to separate it into years is kind of arbitrary and hmm. um, it's kind of um, not very authentic because years are things that we humans construct and, you know, hmm. but um, there's a, there's a quote by um, Evan Thomas Thompson. I think his name is, he's a philosophy of mind professor at the university of British Columbia. I like one of his quotes and I'm going to read it. It says, um, just like Buddhists argue that nothing is constant, everything changes through time. Mm -hmm. You have a constantly changing stream of consciousness. Um, and from a neuroscience perspective, the brain and body is constantly in flux. There is nothing that corresponds to the mm -hmm. sense that there is an unchanging self. So this is a constant thing. It's not just this year, I'm gonna change. No, you're constantly in flux, constantly changing. And I think that <clears throat> from that perspective, I'm just going to embrace that change and understand that, you know what, my desires change, my um, outlooks change, my attitudes change all the time. Um, and they're caused by things that I may not even be aware of, but they do happen. What I kind of realized in myself, I want to really just focus in on things that make me happy, like the music stuff. I got a I got a little joke about uh, a water. Jesus walks into a bar with his disciples and orders 12, wa 12 waters and looks over at the disciples <laughs> and winks. <laughs> That's really I don't funny. get it. <laughs> I'm trying what? Are oh, he's on the empathetic atheist channel, YouTube channel. It premiered mm -hmm. last night, so if you want to check it out, check it out. I was nice. debating a uh, preacher or theist or whoever he was, Matt. And um, so there's a couple things I want to do and change and just focus on those things that are fun and meaningful to me. So nice. Very cool. Dread. That was amazing, Scott, by the way. I appreciate you sharing that. Uh, like Dread, what's your uh, <clears throat> uh, way you're going to improve yourself? Your starting well, uh, before I talk about myself, I, I just wanted to uh, share um, a comment by our streaming viewer here. One sure, what a fan. Loma has said he lost weight in 2020, but my physical abilities are lacking. So I've been working on that. Also working on including SE questions into my conversation. Nice. So that's a, that's a great direction to move in. As a quick little distraction, best three SC questions, in my opinion, are, what do you mean by that? Just ask them what they mean. Give them a chance for them to rephrase it in their own words. Mm -hmm. It does a lot of good. Mm -hmm. Second one, how can how we, we test, test that? that? How can we test that? Let's make it a group project where we both figure out how you arrived at this conclusion, okay? Make sure it's we, how can we test that? And then the last question is, how reliable is that test? If you just right. ask those three questions, man, you get to some great ground and you don't have to think about, well, what analogy should I use? Should I use the Tic Tac? Should I use the Aardvark analogy? Should I use Lamborghini? It's like, no, 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 just, hey man, what do you mean by that? How can we test what that? Do we, what do we do test? if the per what do we do if the person is not receptive to those two? Conversation takes two people. If they're not receptive, there's nothing you can do. You can't force it. But if you can keep yeah. it a positive conversation, and I think asking someone what they mean by something is a positive way to get deeper into their their epistemology, it's totally gonna work for you. But don't force something that's not receptive. That's yeah. just you harassing somebody. <laughs> we don't want to do that. We don't want we don't want to be the proselytizers. Let the Christians do that. <laughs> Jet fire, what do you got? 
So, uh, so of course, uh, this upcoming course I'm teaching um, has got me right into the material. So, uh, you know, I'm going through the textbook, breaking up uh, into lessons, uh, the content that I want to focus on. So, uh, <clears throat> becoming a better critical thinker myself is is my goal, um, and trying to share that out with other people. Um, it it only helps the whole process to be better at it myself. So. Nice. Nice. Okay. Um, I would say for at least my input for 2021, um, there's a really dumb question that I read on the internet of what you should ask on a first date on whether or not you appreciate the mind or the body first. And that's such a Jimmy question because <laughs> that's such, that's the question where it's like, everyone's just going to say mind because they want to seem like they're deep. Dance. Yeah. 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 But the thing is, and here's the, this is why it was irking me when I was at the grocery store today. It's like the mind is the product of the body right yeah it is an emergent property of the brain it's a part of your it's a product of your flesh and right. the better you take care of your body the better your mind will benefit as a result and so that's something that i've noticed on me it's not just about exercising it's about the mental state that i'm in like am i exercising too much am i just distracting myself procrastinating from something else so what i want to do this year is work on an aspect of just letting go of things that have been bothering me emotional baggage and let that be a part of my curriculum towards improving my body, like releasing stress and things that I don't have control of and things I shouldn't be holding on to. Cause I think towards that will make me a better bodyful person <laughs> and a mindful person in, in both of those regards. Larry, what do you have as something you'll improve and you can take out the show? Well, uh, I hope to get back into writing some more. I, I, I do a lot of debating online, but it's all paragraphs, you know, one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. And I've been doing some of that on Zoom as well. Nice. But I'd like to write some more articles for my blog. It, I've let it... Well, I'm, other than that, I'm, uh, I lost my job during COVID. Uh, it was, I'm 70 years old. It wasn't much of a job to begin with. It was just extra income. And I'd like to get another job. I'm, I'm actively looking for that. So uh, writing, getting a job, you know, going forward, trying to just generally improve. Nice. And uh, we'll see how it goes. Yeah. Uh, we're down at the top of the, uh, we're up at the top of the hour now. So I guess my <laughs> yeah, it's confusing. Out. You're just like, well. <laughs> yeah. Um, my content, if the user, listener, fan would like to find it, is at digitalfreethought.com. Be sure to click on the blog button for radio show archives, atheist songs, many articles on the subject of atheism. My book is called Atheism What's It All About? It's available on Amazon. If you have any questions for the show, send them to askanatheist at knoxvilleatheist.org and we'll answer them on future shows. Uh, if you're having trouble leaving religion, then go online and look for recoveringfromreligion.org. They'll help you with your issues. If you're watching this on YouTube, be sure to like and subscribe. And uh, that's about it. This has been the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour for another week. Remember, everybody is going to somebody else's hell. The time to worry about it is when they prove that heavens and hells and souls are real. Until then, don't sweat it. Enjoy your life. And we'll see you next Wednesday on WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. <laughs> Say bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye. <laughs>